Okay, John Mankey. Hi, I'm John Menke. I'm a um, rancher in Quartz Valley and a uh, science advisor for S Scott Valley Protect Our Water and Siskiyou County Water Users Association. Um, I, I began my career in range science in 1967 and uh, uh, finally became a professor at uh, UC Berkeley in, in uh, 1973. And my first project was to put wildfire back in uh, Calaveras Big Tree State Park. So. We wouldn't, we wouldn't burn down the Palace Hotel tree, which is 22 feet in diameter. Um, the litter and duff had accumulated since 1890 to about 36 inch litter and duff. We had to pull it back from the trees when we put, put fire back in. We, we, we taught the state park system first how to put fire back in by carrying a drip torch and uh, getting out there and doing something. They, they were shaking their heads when they were doing it. But we trained Jan van de Wagtendonk, who then put fire back in Yosemite National Park and, um, and, then, and then we got a good program going and burning, and then the population of the state of California got so high they didn't want to smell the smoke anymore, so basically the program largely shut down. They're still talking about using uh, timber harvest as a surrogate for a um, uh, natural fire, um, and that's probably what has to happen. I, I started coming up in this country in, in 1991, uh, we had just completed a big uh, deer migration study. They, they drowned 6,000 deer out on Trinity Lake when the deer walked out on the ice, and they wanted a study done to find out the impact of that reservoir on deer migration patterns. Got to know Tim Burton down there, trained a couple of students down there. One of them is er Eric Loft. He's currently head of wildlife management for Fish and Game in Sacramento, and I'm sure he's absolutely pissed off uh, with, with his agency because it's been totally captured by the environmental community. They used to do deer habitat improvement with um, uh, good money. They all pay it out in salaries now. They got no money. And, and so they're basically, they're burning it up and people sitting on their butts and doing nothing for any, any uh, of the habitat needs for deer. We got people in this room who used to see 2,500 bucks killed in this valley. They're lucky to get 300 now. So um, I got really stimulated working with Tim Burton. He asked me, would I supervise a student to study, do a Marble Mountain study? I gave that study to Brian McFadden last night because he was interested in that, that work. It got me coming up here and my wife and I made a lowball offer at a ranch in, in Quartz Valley and got it for a song. Uh, the environmentalists tried to get us out of here last year, offered us five million bucks to leave. Yet they didn't want me around here talking. And I don't like that kind of horseshit when the government comes up here and, and tries to tell me to get out of here because I, because I know too much. Okay. Uh, I won't get too carried away now. So what, what, what I have up here on the board is a, is a set of pictures of what we've done. Um, we, uh, I have a listing of the kind of things that, that we, we, we've done, but I, I work with the Forest Service and the RCD very carefully uh, uh, to put uh, re rebuild Cliff Lake Dam. Um, it, it was a major project. Uh, the, the RAT committee uh, uh, matched the equip money. It's a $56,000 project. Lori Bundy, NRCS, designed the dam with the help of Bill Bennett um, from the Division of Dam Safety. And that dam probably washed out in the 64 flood. Um, Charlie Frieden and us, we donated the water for coho recovery. Not this mitigation bullshit. This mitigation stuff is a temporary uh, device for the government to get in your pocketbook and get on your property and take it over. We're, we're, we're into recovery of the coho. The, 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 uh, uh, we, we got nine pages of legal uh, jargon back from the Forest Service of why we can't do it. A, a Ray Halp arranged to finally get that project to go, and we did it, and it was an amazing project. 31, 16 mule trips in there to carry all the gear in there to build those dam, build this dam, and, and we now have another 150 acre feet of storage, which we're trying to use to enhance coho habitat in, in Quartz Valley. It gives us a total of 500 acre feet because it's right above Campbell Lake, about a mile and allows us to have a, a full 500 acre feet of storage. We're strategically using that water for coho needs, but it, it's perfectly in concert with, with, with our irrigation needs. We're all flood. We turned down a $97 pivot project, um, uh, which is a big deal for us not to accept that money. But the last thing our, our ranch needs is a pivot to be more efficient because all that infiltrated water going through those cold gravels is exactly gets, gets you that cold groundwater accretion, ice cold water coming up. 
Uh, the, the well driller said that the water there at East Lick's property is the coldest well water he would ever tested anywhere in his career. The 97 storm did a hell of a mess to our place. Uh, we had $10,000 worth of damage. We, we, uh, in, in those fixes, it was a farm services funded co-op project. And we actually did some nice work with elevated culverts across Long Gulch above Ricky's there on the east side of, um, uh, west side of Quart Quartz Valley. And it took advantage of the money that was available. We got a, a 24 inch steel culvert 40 feet over Long Gulch. There used to be a, a wooden flume that the miners had in there that had long washed out. And, that, uh, and if, if you let that long gulch water come into your ditch, it creates tremendous havoc during these storm events. Uh, we, we put a new ditch on our property with uh, ch borrowed Charlie Frieden's ditcher a few years ago, and we found out by having irrigation a little closer to Immigrant Creek, we could actually make Immigrant Creek have a good solid flow year-round of ice-cold water. So by strategic application of ditching, we, we did that as well. We, we had um, um, Moyle and Mount from UC Davis and 20 students, or actually 20 students on various creeks, where we had seven of them on our ranch for a week. Fish and Game Jim Whelan uh, came out and did the electro shocking. We did a complete inventory of all the fish, all the benthic or organisms on the bottom, and all the diversity of species. We, we had lamprey in there, we had everything in there. Uh, uh, Peter Moyle gave me an A-plus rating on our condition, and you can take a look at the size of the cottonwoods and the repairing systems we have here, but we do graze them. Uh, I happen to know the landscape transfer of nutrients by cattle dung in, into uh, cottonwood forests are very, very important for maintaining growth. Take a look at the trees. You barely see Jennifer and Stella, but we, we, we got 56-inch uh, diameter cottonwoods on our place. I can't take credit for them. They've probably been there 150 years, but we had good regeneration, and there's excellent uh, uh, conditions there on, on that system. Um, the, um, so... The, the Cliff Lake Dam deal is our big deal. Um, uh, Lee Bundy uh, handled that project. He's an excellent mule skinner, and he really knows how to work with a big crew of people up there. We did a good job up there. Um, what I've been doing lately, though, to solve the problem uh, is I've spent all, all my time on my butt at my computer um, and working with all these, with these two groups I'm working with. Uh, number one, we've got to stop the take by Fish and Game and NOAA. NOAA's issuing the, the permits for take uh, at, at, at video layers and maximally equipping the fish in our gate hatchery. And it appears to be have done since it started in 1995 to cause a downward trend to get the fish listed 10 years later in 2005. So we, we, we've, got, we've got a fraudulently fish, uh, listed fish. Now back, back to what uh, Charlie Martin just talked a minute ago on, on the NRCS. Can you fathom? Here's a well-trained soils guy. I had all the soils courses at Davis. And it's a, it was a real institution. It's been all screwed up now. But when I, when I went there in the late 60s through the early 70s, when they really had top notch, it was called water science and engineering then, rather than land, air, and water resources. Anyway, um, I, I tried to get help of, from Jim Comar, NRCS area soil scientist, to help out with the TMDL analysis for the Shasta River and the upper basin. Can you imagine? Ed Burton, the state conservation for NRCS, says, I can't help you. I can't supply you with my area of soil science. It's too hot a political table, a, a political potato up there on the upper basin. So he said, John, wise up. Uh, the dams are going to go, and soil science is out of vogue. Let me tell you, people, soil science is never out of vogue, and we told them about it last night at our little meeting at Mark Baird's conference room, and they better get their act together because through the Data Quality Act, we're going to revise the TMDL for the Shasta River, for the Scott River, and for the upper basins. And believe me, you cannot send 21 million cubic yards of sediment down the, the Klamath River without <laughs> destroying the river. John Makey is another person I've learned to respect. <laughs> I don't agree with him all the time either, but I really respect you, John. So. <laughs> he has a little tendency sometimes to get some of the political comments into, but he's done some work, so that's why he's up here. Uh, can you turn that on? Okay. 